In order to discuss basic steps you can take to handle process troubleshooting, we're going to add an exception shape, which will show us error messages. Let's discuss some of its features. The exception shape provides the ability to terminate the data flow down a path and define custom error messages to be reported in the Manage tab. Exception shapes are often used when document data fails to meet certain conditions of a route or decision shape and should not be processed further. The exception shape allows for the finer strategic control in your process flow when an error is introduced. So it terminates the documents in a doc process flow, it flags the process execution as failed, and it logs custom errors in the process and document logs. So these custom error messages are a mix of static and dynamic content. Dynamic content is populated using parameters, which can represent values such as data from a document field, the current system time and date, a static value, the results of the database query, or a number of other values. So you can use multiple parameters when creating a message. The placeholder number corresponds to the order of the parameters defined at the bottom of the dialog. The type of alert triggered from an exception shape is the process execution type. This slide shows an example of the process execution alert. Since a new exception is being logged in our production process, let's, let's explore how you or an administrator can receive external alerts in the event a process fails. Email alerting along with RSS feeds tracks processing without having to log into the Atomsphere, and messages are aggregated and sent from the platform roughly every five minutes. From the account dropdown, we're going to select the menu and then the email alerts to create an email alert. So I'm going to demonstrate exercise seven here, which is configuring the forced exception notice. So again, to recap, we're going to use the exception shape to stop the data flow down a path and to define the custom error messages reported in the Manage tab. So in the exception shape, you can define when document data fails to meet certain conditions of a route or decision shape and shouldn't continue processing. So in this exercise, we're going to add an exception to the process to fail all records not meeting the criteria of the decision shape's logic, which is new account. Exercise seven, we're going to open up our prospect tracking process. So if you open your developer one, prospect tracking under processes, and then double click on prospect tracking, it's going to open up. You also could have found it under your welcome under open a recent item. So once we're in our prospect tracking, we're gonna add this exception notice. So we're gonna go under our logic and we're gonna drag and drop an exception shape onto our canvas. And for the title, we are going to put in old account record. We're going to ask it to stop a single document. And now we need to configure the message shape. So we're going to put six lines in. And then we're going to say account ID, squiggly bracket one, name, squiggly bracket two. All right. So now that we've written the message, you can see that we're referencing a one and a two. So since we have those, we need to set the parameters that correspond to the one and correspond to the two. First thing we're going to have to do now is add a parameter. This is going to be a profile element. The profile type will be XML. The profile is going to be our Salesforce account query response. And the element that we're referencing is going to be ID. All right, so you can see we're taking that account ID to match in the message. So based on that, you can kind of guess what we're going to do next is we're going to create another parameter. It's going to be an XML profile, and it's going to be using the same Salesforce account query response, but this time we're going to be pulling out the name. Profile element, XML, Salesforce account query response, and the element is name. Now we can see that we've set the parameters that we needed for the corresponding message shape. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit OK. We're actually going to remove the stop sign from the false path because now what we want to have happen is we want it to hit the exception shape instead of stopping there. So I removed the stop sign. So if you hovered over the stop sign and you clicked remove, it will take it off the process canvas. And then I connected that false path to the exception shape. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to execute the process in test mode using the test atom cloud. So we're going to save, test using our test atom cloud, and we're going to run our test. 
So at the process level, at Atomsphere reports only the first document error returned. So we have to troubleshoot to find out if any other document failures exist at the document level. At the exception shape, it failed with gene point. So we have our error message up at the top here. So looking at the logs, we have a timestamp, we have the level, we have what shape that we're looking in right now, and we have the message. So you can see under the message, if we click on the hyperlink for it, it's going to tell us the account ID and name gene point, and that is where the error occurred. Same with the naming for edge communication. Now you can complete exercise seven.